That honor goes to Kevin Swartz. We're going to be talking actively managed certificates, structured products, and the magic thereof. Thank you, Simon. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me tonight. My job is to build product, develop new product um, within our corporate and investment banking team. I do, however, sit within the greater equity structuring team in uh, global markets at Standard Bank. And two of our core functions are to manage both the structured products and the actively managed certificates program. My intention tonight is hopefully not to bore you, um, but rather to get across some crucial facts in relation to structured products and actively managed certificates, demystify the concepts that shroud these products, because the truth is that they're actually quite simple um, in their nature. And while bankers like myself, while bankers like myself love to um, traditionally complicate them with fancy terms and uh, uh, you know underlines in terms of different asset classes that all sound really funky and fancy, they're actually quite simple to understand. They're a useful tool in your investment strategy, and that's the most important outcome of today, to empower you to use these within your investment strategy. So before we jump into the actual detail of structured products and actively managed certificates, there are four goals that I like to consider whenever I'm presenting on products or considering building a product for the bank or clients, and that's essentially wealth creation. Let's be honest, no one is here for any other reason but to make money. That is why we're investing in the markets. We're trying to grow our wealth. How do we do that? We've all drummed, uh, beaten this drum a thousand times. Diversification, diversification, diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, structured products and AMCs are effectively two sound investment strategies that can help you to diversify. No problem. Financial advice. It's a core metric of any bank and our wealth and investment strategy. And what are we ultimately trying to do when it comes to um, any investment strategy? Build a comfortable retirement. So when I talk through the various slides on the upcoming pages, my intent is to tie them back to these goals and ultimately ensure that we reach a comfortable retirement and that you are empowered with the, with the relevant investment strategies to achieve those goals. So I don't particularly love this slide. It has, it has a lot of verbiage um, and traditional ways of defining structured products. At the bottom, you'll see concepts like synthetic investments, a really fancy term, synthetic investments, a hybrid or a mixture of fixed income and equity. Uh, most people don't know what fixed income is, so that already makes it sound complicated. On top of this slide, we would typically show you another slide of how we structure structure products using things like zero coupon bonds, Asian options, credit default swaps, all those wonderful terms bankers love to talk about. But the truth of the matter is when you look at structured products, those are not important. That's what the bank does in the background. And what the bank does in the background is actually relevant to you as the client. What is relevant to you as the client is what are you actually buying and how does it work for you in your investment strategy? So structured products are actually got two components, simple as that. Capital guarantee or protection at maturity. That word maturity is important. We'll discuss it later in the products. And what's the second part of a structured product? It offers participation to both local and offshore indices. Again, we'll explore the concepts of both local and offshore offerings and how structured products are a benefit. So what are structured products? They're not zero coupon bonds. They're not hybrid instruments. They're not synthetic instruments. They're an instrument that you can buy. It gives you capital protection and upside exposure to an asset class. That asset class can be various different asset classes in equity, fixed income, et cetera. That's as simple as what a structured product is in its bare nature. And the presentation will hopefully demystify these concepts and show you exactly how they work um, and explain the various different funky names we have for structured products, um, but they actually all do the same thing. So what are the benefits of structured products? There's lots, um, and let's start with the first one. Product flexibility, quite a broad term. The product flexibility actually sits in my world as the bank. Structured products are an asset class that allow me to invest or offer you exposure to various different asset classes. Fixed income, equity, credit, top 40 exposure. Maybe you want S&P exposure, Euro stocks. Everyone has a different investment objective, a view or a macroeconomic view on a different market. 
the bank has different macroeconomic views. <clears throat> Our uh, stockbroking team, structured products are simply a vehicle that allows us to offer these various different offerings, and therefore they are flexible. They also allow you as the retail client to access different payoff profiles and or markets that are not typically easily accessible. Bonds, for example. The bond market as an individual investor normally requires, ah, our bond desk won't look at an individual trade for under 20 million rand. And even that, that's, that's not size because it's an institutional market. But that doesn't mean retail investors don't want to gain access to bonds and fixed income. Structured products and the way that they're, they're packaged allow us to tranche these, these products together and as for as little as 50,000 rand, you can gain exposure to those asset classes. The costs are priced in. I'm not a liar. Banks make money. Fact. We're not here um, you know, to dance around. I want to get paid. We've got to make money. How do we make money? There are costs embedded in any product. They're not hidden. They're fully disclosed. In every single brochure, marketing advice that you would receive, you will see the costs that are embedded. Typically in the market, your brokerage costs and structured products are roughly 50 bips per annum or half a percent per annum. So a three and a half year product would have a 1.75% fee built in. Now that's an important concept. But what is nice about structured products and the way the bank structures structured products, or to be honest, the entire industry does the same, is we price those costs into the product. What does that mean? Very simply, if you put 100 Rand into a structured product, you're going to get 100 Rand exposure to the markets, not 100 Rand less the fee. And that's important. So whenever you see a payoff profile advertised in Standard Bank structured products, the fee is built into the product. There's no additional fee on top. So the net payoff profile that you're buying includes all your fees. Smooth volatility. I'm sure everyone who's looked at investing has heard of the concept of volatility. It's a complicated concept, but in the simplest term, volatility stands for the rate of change of a share price, essentially, or an asset class's price. Volatility is the key metric of risk. <clears throat> you cannot make money in financial markets without volatility. But unfortunately, as the rules go, what goes up must come down. Markets go up and down. As such, volatility can be dangerous. Structured products with their embedded capital protection help smooth volatility. The next benefit of structured products is that they are listed. That's probably not true. Standard Bank products are listed. You can buy over-the-counter structured products. All that means is that they will not be housed on a formal exchange. But Standard Bank decided to move its entire structured products note program into a listed framework because it becomes more easily accessible for the investor via their online share trading or brokerage account. It has daily prices, statements, tax advice. All of it falls within the normal brokerage account and the standard process that goes with it. So it becomes far easier to access as opposed to a long form confirmation legal document that you receive for an over-the-counter product on day one and basically never hear from the bank for the next five years and hope you made money. A lower risk alternative to shares. You guys uh, recently had the power hour on introduction to shares. Shares are a great start into the markets, but like I said, volatility is your big friend and your big enemy whenever you invest. There is downside to raw investing in shares, ETFs, etc. Capital protection reduces the risk of downside. Tailored investment returns. That talks again to product flexibility, and I think I spoke about this already. Tailored investment returns simply mean that the bank has the ability to offer you asset classes, payoff profiles, structures that wouldn't typically be available. So in South Africa, we have a fairly limited share universe, primarily the top 40, um, you know, from an accessible and a research point of view, um, and a few ETFs overseas, hundreds of thousands of ETFs, various different strategies to consider. Structured products in the South Africa market allow us to bring a lot of these tried and tested international strategies or local thematics to you in a structured product. Capital protection. I'm only going to bring this up one more time. All structured products have an element of capital protection. It is a core function. Our presentation today will primarily talk towards 100% capital protection for ease of use. That does not mean that all structured products are 100% capital protected. I'm going to open myself here to a few complicated questions, but there are two essential differences. You could have a fixed downside protection, so say 90% or 80%. In other words, you can't lose more than 10 or 20% of your investment. 
And then there's a consideration for what they call barriers. It's complicated. I will talk to you about it in the order call slides um, because they typically are found in order call structured products. But barriers provide a limited amount of downside protection before they knock in or knock out. And at that point, you end up having uncapped downside. So the capital protection can fall away. So it is not safe to assume that all structured products are 100% capital protected. It is important to read through the material or speak to your financial advisor. Discoverable on OST, that again talks to listed. Guys, it's so important for me for a client to be able to easily access their account, see the, the, the price of the investment, try and understand it, ask questions, have a call center, download statements. Those, the ease of access digital technology today is extremely important. So what is Standard Bank's offering? And again, I won't lie, uh, there are competitive banks in SA that offer structured products. Essentially, we have three separate programs. The first two are JSE listed. We have our local listed retail structured products. We identify these on the JSE by the term RLN, Retail Listed Note. That's the identifier alpha code. If you ever see RLN plus a digit, it stands for a standard bank local listed, pro, uh, local listed structured note. All the local listed structured notes is a note reference in the top 40 with the various different payoff profiles. And we'll go into those payoff profiles later in the presentation. Inward listed retail structure products. Inward listed is a beautiful name that we can't get away from. But uh, what inward listed stands for is an investor's ability to use brands but gain exposure to offshore markets without using their offshore allowance. Essentially, you put in rands, the bank will convert those rands to dollars, euros, pounds, etc., depending on what the product references, use its own macro prudential limits for bot reporting and getting you exposure to the offshore market, so you get currency exposure in your, in your product, and at maturity, convert it back to RANDs and give it to you in RANDs. So inward listed structured products are no different to local listed structured products. You'll find them in your OST account, very similar payoff profiles, difference, they reference offshore indices, which means they come with one additional complexity. They come with USD, typically USD RAND exposure on the performance, and we'll go into that in detail. Offshore structured products for individuals who have externalized their money already and want to invest in structured products. We offer USD, Euro, Aussie dollar, pound, I think that's it, structured products. They're issued off our Luxembourg note program where we have an offshore note program and again through a listed uh, platform and you can use your externalized money. So that's dollar, dollar money, by external dollars buying dollar product. And those are effectively the three programs. So. The next couple of slides are essentially going to go through structured products and their various different types of structured products. There's actually four types of structured products in the South Africa market that tend to trade. That's it. There are more, I won't lie, but typically you will only see four. The first one in its most basic form, participation notes. What are participation notes? Participation notes are exactly what they say. They provide investors with participation on the upside. One to one, two to one, three to one, depending on the pricing. You could get gearing, so enhanced participation, or just simple participation notes that give you one to one exposure to the top 40 or the S&P 500. They come with an element of capital protection, usually 190%. So Standard Bank calls participation notes that are inward listed market multipliers. We call local listed participation notes protected index investments. If you ask me why, I don't know. Everyone loves a funky name. You will also have these calls in the market as super trackers, enhanced growth notes. I've heard a few. Um, they're, they're all the same thing. And the best way to explain these is a very simple graph. I do apologize for the simplicity. I'm not a very good drawer. But this is the simple explanation for a participation-based payoff profile. The black line, that's essentially your index. For the volatility, it can run from 100 up or 100 down. The blue line, your structured product at maturity. Remember we said capital protection. So structured products, in this instance, it's 100% protected. It cannot go below 100. If the index at maturity is down 50, you are going to get 100% of your invested capital back. However, on the upside to structured products, notice the gearing, the participation. This is not a one-to-one -one participation. In this case, it looks more like a 1.2, uh, 1 1.3 times, meaning 
for every one rand that the index goes up, you're getting one rand 20 or one rand 30 cents performance. Simple as that. So funky names, that's all they are. When they're inward listed, this piece is capital protected in rands. It never changes. It's completely irrelevant what your FX does. That's your capital protection part. Your upside, however, is quasi USD or foreign currency exposed. Now that's quite nice. Everyone here has the narrative, externalize your money, the rand's potentially gonna depreciate. That's not a personal view, that's just the general narrative in the market and we've seen that as a thematic for quite some time. This allows you as a South African investor without externalizing your money to get geared exposure to the upside and USD rand exposure on that upside to enhance it. Second type of structured products. Digitals, binary options. We call them digitals or digital pluses in the offshore. We call them accumulators um, when they're local listed on top 40. The advantage is most of the market just calls them digitals or digital pluses. And they're actually quite simple. So digitals and digital pluses are designed for the investor who doesn't have an extremely bullish view like they did on the participation note. If you're investing in a participation note, you are risk averse to downside but you are looking for a bullish upside. It could be uncapped or capped, but you're looking for some sort of gearing. When it comes to a digital payoff, your view on the markets are, I want capital protection of some sort. I don't really think the markets are going down, but I'm not convinced that they're going to you know, shoot the lights out 200%. And that's what a digital does. It says protection on the downside, again, core element of structured products. But if the index is flat or positive, it's going to pay you a coupon or a fixed return. On top of that, if it's a digital plus and the pricing allows, allows for it in the, <clears throat> respectful, in the respective reference asset, it can have additional uncapped upside. And again, the best way to show this is on a very simple graph. This is a digital plus. What does it say? Again, the black line, simple, that's your index. Can go up, can go down. On day one, you invest at 100. That is your protection level in this product, 100%. Cannot lose 100%, it's in rants. But what it says is at maturity, if that index is even just flat, so it's at 100, doesn't even have to be positive, just as long as it's not negative, you instantly get a 38% return and you will get 138. What's nice about a digital plus and one of its core benefits, it continues to participate on the upside and I can give you some really complicated way of how we do that with optionality, but we do. But as you as the investor, you're interested in the payoff profile. Remember to what I said earlier, we don't need to complicate structured products by the various different banking terms. So as an example, if the index completes at 160, in other words, the index is up 60% between now and say three years, this product would return you 60%. You would get your 100 back plus 60. So you're not capped in this product. So those are quite nice. It's kind of a win-win strategy. You don't really have to do really well to get 38% and you've got uncapped upside. Funny, we'll talk about it a bit later, but we're actually going to have one of these digital pluses come out in the next week or two, um, and we'll, we'll give you more detail about that later. Third type of structured products, auto-callables. One thing you'll be happy, they are only called auto-callables. No one's come out with a funky name for them yet, although Adi did try. Um, guys, auto-callables are essentially a string of contingent digitals. Unfortunately, I cannot find a better way to explain that. Um, I will show you a payoff which explains it. But basically what auto callables do is they take a simple digital payoff profile. Instead of having a fixed term, they break it up into certain terms where there's a potential to either unwind early and get paid a fixed return or roll to the next period. And the best way to explain that is with an example. And this is the example that I used. It's a three-year auto call. And what it says is in year one, you invested 100% over here. Perfect. At the end of year one, an order call goes through two thought processes. Where is the index? Is it flat or positive, i.e. yes? Great, the order call terminates. You receive 100% of your capital back and one times the coupon. In this example, let's consider that coupon to be 10%. So you're gonna have received at the end of one year, your capital back, 10% return. You can go and reinvest it however you please. However, if the index is negative at the end of year one, the auto call accumulates that coupon and rolls to year two, where it now goes through the exact same thought process. At the end of year two, 
If the index is flat or positive to the initial index level that was traded two years ago, it will call, you get your capital back, and two times a coupon, 20%. If not, not to worry, rolls to your third observation. And it's only at your third observation where downside becomes a consideration. If the index is flat or positive, you're going to get three times your coupon, so 30% and your capital back. Great, that's the ideal outcome. However, if it's negative, you fall into the area of capital protection. And typically with auto calls, this is 100% because it's the easiest to understand. Typically, there's a concept of a European knock-in barrier. That is what it is called. You will see it as a 70% EKI in any document because that is the terminology for it. What it means is it is only observed at maturity, three or five years, depending on the structure. And what it says is if the index is down, so if you have a 30% European knock-in barrier, it effectively states for if the index is down 30% or more at maturity, your capital protection falls away. What does that mean? If the index is down anywhere between 100 and 70.01, you're fully capital protected. You're going to get 100% of your capital back. If it's lower, you lose your capital protection and your capital is at risk. So the benefit of auto calls really is they are coupon bearing products that outperform money markets typically with an element of risk at the end of the period. But the advantageous benefit of being able to call early. One of the downsides of structured products that we'll discuss later with any uh, asset class, there is a downside. One of the downsides being um, negative, uh, st oh, sorry, one of the downsides being term. Structured products are term based products and therefore not designed to be unwound early. So, order calls is a nice way to avoid that downside. Hybrids, hybrid notes. This is the last type of notes you're going to call, you're going to see. Again, some funky names. Our offshore hybrid notes or inward listed hybrid notes are called performers. Our local listed hybrid notes are called quantum pluses. Other hybrid notes are called twin win strategies. Hybrid notes are an interesting animal, if I can put it that way. So hybrid notes were developed on the basis when clients come to us and say, I want to invest in markets offshore or local. I want capital protection. Okay, cool. We've got plenty of options there. Oh, but I also want a fixed return, guaranteed. Uh, as a banker, you stand back and you say, listen, there's only so much I can do. I can't give you everything. And these products offer that benefit, but there is a cost, and I will explain it so that you're aware. Again, the best way to explain a hybrid order call or a return-based product is to look at their payoff profile. And typically, a performer is the most common one we use in the bank. It's broken up into three parts. If you put in 100 Rand, the first 25 Rand or 25% is put on nothing more, more complicated than a fixed deposit, which they will call a zero coupon bond. It guarantees you your capital back at the end of the term, in this case, 12 months, and a coupon. Typically, our coupons are around 20%. One year, 20%. I think one year is currently 8.5, 8.9. Seems really nice. It's a super attractive return. The second 25% or 25 Rand in this example, again, put on another deposit. What do we get? 40%. Bear in mind, it's 40% on your 25 Rand and 20% 20, 20 on your 25 Rand. But those are great returns, and they're guaranteed. If you don't unwind early, you're definitely going to get them. The balance of your money, the 50% or 50 Rand, is invested in either what I like to call a mini multiplier or a mini digi per what we discussed earlier. It has an element of capital protection, uncapped or capped, uh, digital or participation based, and it's a LinkedIn index for five years. This looks amazing. So half of your money gets exposure to equity markets. You get a lot of guaranteed fixed returns. And this makes a lot of sense in the right um, investment framework. But you do have to be careful on your investment outlook in this particular product because you are effectively how the bank achieves this. You're borrowing from the five-year term to pay out bigger coupons in years one and three. And that's great. However, the downside is instead of getting, so maybe you got 1.1 times gearing here, but if you had invested in a five-year multiplier, it may have been one and a half or two times geared. So if markets perform over a five-year period, this entire structure might underperform. However, if markets don't perform, this structure will outperform. So it's always important to consider your entire investment narrative <clears throat> and what's important for your outcome. 
So let's summarize our four structured products into our wealth management narrative. Capital preservation, limit downside. Two products work for that really well typically. Participation notes or multipliers and digitals. They generally tend to come to the market with 100% capital protection. Order callables, seldomly. They do from time to time, but seldomly. Hybrid performers, they will give you capital preservation, but they can underperform on that five year piece. Income notes. So this is for clients who basically want very limited risk, but uh, would like additional performance or return to a, uh, to, to a fixed deposit. Order callables and hybrid performers, those work really well. Capital appreciation, that's why we're here and that goes back to our goals from earlier. All of these notes provide capital appreciation and that's the intent, to grow your wealth. Diversification, all of these notes provide a diversification because they can be linked to various different asset classes and indices. Before we move off structured products and move on to AMCs, I think it's always important to consider your key risks because no product has um, no risks. So structured products are not Delta One. Our retail team tells me that's a very horrible word, Delta One, and I do agree with them because if you're not a option trader or banker, it doesn't make much sense. But there's, again, one of those terms that you can't get away from. So the risk of structured products, and we see this quite often, and that goes into the term, term structure of a structured product, is Delta One means that during the life of the product, if the underlying index, say the S&P, is up 10 Rand and you have a one-to-one -one participation note, your note might not be up 10 Rand. It might be up 7 Rand. And that's the concept of optionality. At maturity, if it's up 10 Rand, you will be up 10 Rand. And that is why the payoff structures in structured products and the capital protection is always referred to at maturity. It doesn't mean you'll lose money during the life of the trade. You are certainly accruing. But depending on how the option model works, and the, and the market conditions, you just might not be delta one. It's an important point to consider because you might get afraid when you see the, the market to market of your note in your account. Structured products are term instruments. Going back to the very beginning where I said, structured products make for wonderful um, terminology for bankers to use, uh, zero coupons, etc. But the truth of the matter is those products do have a limitation in their flexibility and bankers can only push them so far. So structured products are designed to be invested for the full term. You should not be using capital invested in structured products that is used for short term. There should be no need to unwind it. It should only be extreme circumstances. And the reason for that is because you're not Delta One, because you're breaking various instruments on the underlying like fixed deposits, it will not be favorable. That doesn't mean you'll lose money. It's just not necessarily favorable and therefore always to err on the side of caution. The bank is liquid. We do provide bid, bid prices all day, every day. That doesn't mean you can't unwind. You can unwind. It is at fair price. It's just expensive, not because the bank is try, actually trying to take fees, simply because you're breaking the underlying products. Another caution to be aware of with structured products, unlike AMCs or ETFs, structured products are listed in an IPO fashion. What does that mean? Public offering, private offering, in this case, private offerings. There is no offer for structured products on screen. It's not common because of the design of the underlying instruments, like I said earlier, bonds or credit, for example, that we might reference, or offshore indices. A future on the, um, a future on the uh, S&P 500 isn't a couple of thousand rand. We're talking 500,000 rand at least to get exposure to one future. So structured products are designed to allow investors to pool their money into one structure during the book build phase, that is how South African structured products are sold, and then invest, which means once you're invested, you are in, you are welcome to exit. However, you will not be able to upsize your investment. Should you want to upsize your investment, you'll have to go into a future tranche, which might have different terms and or different underlying reference assets. That brings us to the end of structured products. That's the easy one. And I'm trying not to bore everyone too much. The next one is AMCs. This is a hot topic. I only had three slides on it because it's actually not something that we can talk extensively to, um, and I'll explain why. So AMCs are, in my mind, and the best way I can explain them, the love child between unit trusts or CISs and ETFs. And they effectively make a cost-efficient vehicle for both clients and asset managers 
to distribute their strategy. Now let's go all the way back to slide one where I said, let's keep those goals in mind. What's the key goal? Diversification, sound retirement. So structured products we discussed, they're great. They've got predefined payoff profiles. They're listed, they're easily accessible. They're gonna give you access to a whole bunch of different payoff profiles, capital protection, offshore markets, different currencies, etc. ETFs and shares, amazing investments. Cheap, easily understood, lots of research. But there's definitely something to be said about, as the name says, actively managed portfolios. They still exist. We have huge houses, Alan Gray and Coronations as an example. Those are actively managed portfolios just in the CIS world. The problem with actively managed portfolios generally or historically was actively managed portfolios are extremely expensive to set up. You'll notice if you go look into most unit trusts, they are generally got quite a lot of fees through them, besides their management fees, a bunch of fixed fees. If you compare those to something like passive, like a ETF, uh, your turn ratio is significantly more expensive. And uh, it's important to consider your turn ratio because it, it tampers your ultimate performance, right? So actively managed certificates are quite popular overseas. They're not totally new. I think they've been around for the last four or five years. Um, in the South African market, quite new. As a local bank, we are the only of, uh, of AMCs, to my knowledge. We were first to market. And what are AMCs? Like I said, they're the love child of ETFs and unit trusts, or CISs. So AMCs are exchange traded. Like listed notes, they're issued under our note program. The difference with AMCs, which typically, um, the difference to structured products, which typically have a short-term three or five-year life, our AMCs are issued with a 15-year life banner like an ETF, they market make all day, bid and offer. They are designed for you to trade in and out of as you see fit. AMCs allow for discretionary management of the underlying constituents. That's really complicated. What that means is your Cat2 asset manager, like standard stockbroking, has the ability to, develop, to, to sell or roll out an investment strategy that's actively managed within the banner. So instead of you having to now go and sign up to different asset managers and invest or let them, or different stockbrokers and let them control your account to get their strategy, you're able to buy various different AMCs in strategies that you support. And those strategies are found on our website. This will change. Our warrants.stanabank.co.za, it's a legacy website for our note program. All of our AMCs and our asset managers fund fact sheets are all there. That allows you to determine as the investor which strategy suits you. What strategies are available, you might ask. Well, by definition, and this is evolving, um, AMCs allow you to invest in securities that are defined in the FMA Act. That's quite broad. It limits, limits your derivatives and it limits your exposure to hedge fund type strategies. However, the rules are changing, they are evolving. It was the first draft from the, AMC, uh, from, from the JAC and we are becoming more dynamic with time. Accessible in your OST account, traded exactly like an ETF. They're an alternative investment vehicle for investment managers. What does that mean? AMCs have this life cycle, or rather three parts. You have the investment manager. That is the best I can use as standard stockbroking as an example. Any investment manager that has a strategy that they would like to sell to clients, that is actively managed, they come to us as Standard Bank and say they would like to list an AMC. Standard Bank's role in the function of an AMC is the note provider. You take credit risk or default risk to Standard Bank, not the investment manager. We will house the AMC. In conjunction with the asset manager, we will develop the listing prospectus of the AMC, which defines its actively managed framework. The asset manager is not allowed to trade outside of that framework, it is regulated. So that is defined on day one, and you get to pick that strategy if you like it or don't like it. Standard Bank will issue the note. Our responsibility is to provide a liquid market for you that you can execute in, and your job as the investor is to decide which strategy you prefer to invest in and gain access to it easily through your stockbroking account. So what do AMCs deliver you? AMCs deliver you actively managed strategies that could reference different asset classes, both local or offshore, so you can get uh, your gain, you can get your quasi offshore exposure through an easily accessible instrument in your OST account. 
So what are the key benefits of actively managed certificates if I haven't covered them? Well, actively managed certificates effectively uh, offer you active portfolios. We're going back to that diversification. Passive has been a, a, a focus for quite some time in financial markets, but there's certainly a place for actively managed portfolios. Potential inward listed exposure. A lot of asset managers offer you exposure to offshore markets in RANDs. That goes back to our inward listed discussion in structured products. So the AMC is listed in RANDs, but you could be getting dollar exposure on your money. Exposure to multiple markets and asset classes. Standard Bank offers you exposure to most of the main markets. Uh, Swiss, Canada, uh, USA, Europe, FTSE, so London, most of all the main markets are covered. Um, unitized on the exchange, they issued on day one as a thousand rand per unit, and obviously they then track according to their performance. And they are liquid market execution, unlike structured products which only have a bid market. This has a bid and offer exactly like an ETF. It's live all day and easily tradable. I'd like to thank you. That's the end of our presentation. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time. Kevin, thank you. Ladies and gents. If you've got questions, uh, we've got some time for questions. One that came through already, someone tweeted me, how many, how often do you list new structured products? It's a great question. So our top 40 structured products run monthly. It's an historic legacy book. And we list uh, one of each of the structured products every month. Our inward listed structure products are typically thematic, and we list them once a quarter, sometimes more. And AMCs, how many have you got? 13. 13. Mm. Okay. Mm. i got to say, your AMC 007 should have been a bond AMC. Ah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> 007, it was, I know, it was almost too easy. <laughs> Gent, ladies, any questions from the audience here? We've got a couple coming through on the webcast. Uh, quickly, a couple of folks were asking the presentation. We will send you a link to it tomorrow morning. Uh, and for the folks who are here, please validate your parking. Reception on the far side will get you out of parking. Otherwise, you've got to walk all the way up again. Um, AMCs, sorry, uh, straight back to structured products, a question there. Term duration, are they usually longer than, than three years? I know some of them are auto call, but aside from the, the auto call. Typical structured products are three and a half years or five years. Okay, because okay. I think that was probably a, a, a tax question coming through. A mm -hmm. uh, question here around structured products as well. Is my counterparty risk Standard Bank of South Africa? It is. Okay. So your only risk in structured products is the default of the bank. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, what else have we got in questions? Yo, can I put a structured product in an endowment? Technically, yes. Practically, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Practic <laughs> practically, yes. Endow endowments are not my world, although we are busy with Liberty on this. They so will see them come okay. out. And uh, I mean, to be honest, Liberty do offer structured products and endowments currently. However, so endowments are finicky, finicky beasts. You can't just plug anything into them. So it requires a bit of finesse. So it's not as simple as today, I want to trade a multiplier and we're going to put it in there because it, it affects balance sheet risk on the LifeCo's balance sheet. It's a predetermined structure. So you will get structures that are already predetermined with the option to put it in the LifeCo or not, but not all products go okay. in. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, are you just listing local and Zara even if they're in inward listed or do you also list on offshore, i.e. Shift or Web Trader? Um, we're not on shifted web trader at the moment because we're going through an upgrade. Um, it is going to be housed there. The bank does have an offshore program through the Isle of Man, but we're going to be digitizing it through uh, shift and web trader in the near future. Perfect. Brendan's asking, are MCs similar to smart beta ETFs? No, they're mm -hmm. more similar to active ETFs, which is a relatively new phenomenon. Correct. So the, the, Correct. The difference between active ETFs and AMCs, active ETFs don't enhance the cost benefit that AMCs do. So active ETFs still technically form a CIS, which means it requires a manco that's quite expensive for a small asset manager to set up. Oh, there's a cunning thing. Okay. Uh, Fundi, I know, okay, so Fundi, implications, uh, tax implications on structured products. I'm going to preface this by saying we're not tax experts, speak to a tax person, but the three-year question I asked because SARS was a Trevor Manual in 2005 or six. It basically hold for plus three years. It's uh, capital gains, not income tax. But please, please, please speak to the experts. We're just taxpayers. <laughs> Questions from the audience here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what makes the AMC is less expensive? 
It's exactly that. So a unit trust is unit trust. Yeah. So unit trust CIS is sorry. To set up a unit trust, you have to form a manco and effectively a trust. That comes with a certain amount of statutory costs and management costs. So for the big guys, that's not a problem. It's diversified across the portfolio. But for your small asset managers, it's extremely expensive to set up. And that fee effectively gets bled into the performance of the of the fund. AMCs, listed notes, there are management fees. It's, uh, typically, I think, in the region of between 25 and 50 bips. That still exists. And the Standard Bank in the same region, depending on the size of the AMC, that's all disclosed. But the actual cost of the AMC is just a listed note. And that's within our normal framework, which is cheap. Mm. What does that mean in terms of cost? Are you trading cost or you know, can someone use like in terms of what the uh, termination or like, value would have been? What do you mean by that? It's a great question. So they're not that expensive to unwind. You'll see the marketing material will say that we hold the right to charge up to 1% unwind fee, which we don't typically charge. The price that you see on screen would be inclusive of all costs, and it's 99% accurate and can be hit. Um, the fee that we talk of, it's not a fee. It's the cost of banking. So, for example, the protection in your structured product is a fixed deposit. If you break a fixed deposit, I think we can all agree it's expensive to break because it's a termed instrument. So, effectively, the bank has gone and deployed those funds because you've deposited them. Now, if you want them back, the bank has to go find those funds and borrow. And when you borrow, you're borrowing on a different curve, and that's the cost that you're experiencing. Over and above the cost of breaking the delta and the hedges, <clears throat> all those fancy terms, but think of it as a fixed deposit that you're breaking. So, hold on, Max, you, you, you said these are going to be are, are listed mm. on the JSC. Mm -hmm. So, does that not then mean that they're okay with it? Like, I mean, buy from someone else who's looking to get out of it? You could take it. You you could you could technically. Um, uh, however, in practice, because Standard Bank is a live market maker, that investor that selling would most likely hit the market maker first. But in practice, yes. Unless I went in at a crazy price. Correct. Yeah. Like like way over. But I like your thinking. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Well, yeah, ease of access. Really exit. Be correct. Yeah. You know, we all have a plan for the next five years, and then something happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you, you went with curve, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, questions coming through. Uh, can I put a structured product in a tax-free? No, you can't. Nope. Nope. Uh, tax-free regulation. Uh, no derivative products whatsoever allowed. I know Treasury is having some conversations, but they don't want to move away from the derivative because they're worried someone's going to sell you a fully geared Aussie or something like that and, and wipe it out. Um, so structured products, no. Uh, brokerage fees on the structured products, no, because it's included. It's included in the price, but they are, I mean, they are the, the broker fees is normally sure, sure. 50 bips per annum, but it's not separate. It's inside. Gotcha. And then on OST, just so you know, if you do trade structured products, only and you don't have a, a brokerage account, you would not pay any fees on that account. We do offer it as a free benefit. Yeah. And that's an important point. And I know you mentioned it in the presentation, Kevin, but if I'm doing, and let's keep it simple, structured product, it's 100 grand, my capital is guaranteed, and let's say I'm getting a 50% return over three years. I pay the 100, uh, that's all I pay. I don't pay anything above it. At the end of three years or the duration, whatever it might be, I get my 150 back. Again, no fees. There are fees, but they're inside that product, not on top of. An example, if I go and buy shares in the market, the fee comes on top of the price that I pay. Correct. You okay. cunning questions. Two good questions. So the coupon, um, can you clarify which coupon you mean so that I can just answer correctly? So they do pay out as a cash amount or potentially an ETF depending on the structure of the product. So the answer is you can reinvest whatever gets paid out of a structured product, and we normally offer investment products. What we also do, <clears throat> to my sins, because it's not an easy process, 
is we offer the ability to roll your structured products. So generally mm -hmm. what we try and do is time the issuance of a new structured product in alignment with the expiry of an old structured product. By doing so, we keep your base cost aligned, which means it's not a taxable event. You don't actually receive the cash. We roll your performance of your previous structured product into your new structured product. So mathematically, you put in 100, you received 150. It expires. Instead of electing cash, which is an option, you elect to roll. We take that 150, we put it into a new structured product that now is exposed to 150 with that capital protection. But because you never received the cash, it's not a taxable event until you exit the structured product. So they are listed. So no, you can transfer to a different broker and within your own legal entity, but you can't transfer to another person. There you would have to buy and sell. So it can be done, but then there would be trading costs. I see your question. Just, I certainly had a question. So let's say we're doing one on the top 40, mm. and I happen to have a large pile of top 40 ETFs. Mm -hmm. Could I give you those in lieu of ZAR? No. <laughs> <laughs> but nice try. I do. Nice try. <laughs> a great question and it depends on the reference asset so if we're trading on a price return index you'll see it in the marketing brochures those indices for example like this vanilla s p 500 or euro stocks they are not they are price return indices they do not pay out dividends if we are trading on a net total return index that means the dividends are reinvested theoretically they will not be paid to you they will be reinvested in the performance of the product so you do earn them good question you work here, you're not allowed to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is easy to exit, it's on screen, the prices are there and for you to hit. And we have an entire market banking team, part of Standard Bank, that's there to assist. Good answer. <laughs> Yes. With as well as Yes. So they're only visible at this specific time. Yes. Right? Is that the same destructive products? Slightly different. So, good question. And I run the warrants desk as well for my sins. Um, the warrants fall under Z04, which effectively trade from nine minutes past nine in the morning till 1649. So they have a slightly different time. So 10 minutes less in the morning, 10 minutes less in the evening. The evening's the closing auction. Uh, not on warrants. No, no it's 10 minutes early. Closing auction for equities at 60. Yes. yes, but it's cl yeah, closed. Then um, structured products fall under ETFs, Z06. They're open from nine to five. So they are limited to the trading hours. Question came through in terms of structured products. Is there on an inward listing a cap as to how much? How much FX exposure? No, so how much? I mean, if I've got, if I'm, I don't know, Krista Visa and I want my billions in no, the structure. No, product. no, we bankers love money. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, banking 101, de taking deposits. <laughs> no, you're right. Any day. So it's a great question. That's a clever question. We are, but I think uh, we have something like 120 billion Rand and it's renewed every year. So that even Capacity. No, it's small. Uh, we keep that wide. We keep at least like 60, 70% of it on a rolling basis. Okay, so even Krista Visa can wonder it. That's what <laughs> the man so just said. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions in the room? Ladies and gents, you are park it. There are no more coming through from the webcast. Uh, Kevin, really appreciate Great presentation, great products. Um, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, people ask me if I, yes, yeah, so I've had structured products and AMCs. I particularly like the ones you talk around the top 40, which kept my downside. Uh, give me a, 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 an X amount, and then if things go good, I get even a little bit more. Um, and I've been actually buying them for my sister because uh, she's quite risk adverse, although she doesn't actually know because I've managed her portfolio. <laughs> for her. She doesn't know. She, I know that she's risk adverse is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I've got AMCs as well. They do as they say on the sticker. They are great products. Uh, so I appreciate it to, to, Kevin, to you all for coming through. It's really great. This is only our second power hour back uh, at Standard Bank in terms of live audiences. We want you to build the audience. It, it, it's, it's great to see faces again. Um, 
yeah, as opposed to as opposed to webcasts where I talk into the into the screen and hope that someone's laughing at me. <laughs> so, to the people on the webcast, we love you too. Uh, our next event is going to be 20 June. It will be it's a Thursday. It will be 5:30. Uh, it could be presented by myself. We're looking at trading, as I said, not how to get rich in a hurry, but how to get into that trading, etc. We will send out links for that, and we will send out links for this evening's video as well. Uh, huge thanks to the Standard Bank team for making this evening slick and happening. Uh, to Kevin, to you, everyone, stay safe. Look after yourself if you can. Look after somebody else as well. Please don't forget to validate your parking ticket. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.